Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. Today, we continue with the second video on our beginner tutorial series on Procreate. In the first video, we covered some essentials that you would use to start a project in Procreate. In this video, we will show how to create this tiny house plan on scale step by step in Procreate. We will import this simple plan and we'll draw the furniture on right scale by using simple methods in Procreate. Then we will add details like shadows and patterns to make it livelier and illustrative. Lastly, we will add colors and textures to create this look. Let's get started. We will create our canvas by hitting the plus button here. Let's choose 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. You can see here the DPI you choose will affect the layer number you can use in Procreate. This is because the iPad can handle only certain amount of processing. So Procreate tells you the amount of layers you can work with from the start. I would recommend 300 or 150 resolution at least once you decided tap create button over here. Now it is time to import our simple plan. We go to wrench icon and choose the add menu. From there tap insert a file option. Then find your file in your iPad folders. While watching this tutorial, you can download this exact plan and follow step by step to create the same result to gain experience. You can find the plan in the description box below, or you can import your own plan and follow the methods on your own way. Now, our plan is inserted in this layer. I tap the thumbnail of the layer and rename it. Then, I swipe the layer to left to lock it safely. Now, it is time to bring the guides on, so we can draw a line and on scale. We go to wrench icon again, and under the canvas menu toggle on the drawing guide. Then we hit edit drawing guide. This brings the drawing guide setup screen. Here we will choose 2mm for the size. We will be working on 1 to 50 scale with this plan. So every 2mm guide we see on screen will be 10cm in real life. If you want to work with a different plan on a different scale, you can decide your own drawing guide sizes here. When you tap down, let's grab this blue dot in the middle and carry it. So we can align the guide with our plan. You can zoom in and choose the corner you want to align the guide. Once you are set, tap the done button on top right corner here. Now let's go to layers menu and create a new layer. You can rename it however you want. Tap on the thumbnail of the layer and choose the drawing assist. This will activate the guide on this layer. We should choose a brush before we step into the actual drawing part. For this kind of technical drawings, it might be best to use the monoline brush from Procreate Brush Library. You can find this brush under the calligraphy brushes. When I want to use a brush continuously during an entire illustration, I usually copy the brush and drag it on top of the brush library, so I can easily find it whenever I need it again. For this, we swipe the brush left and choose Duplicate. Then we swipe down the brush library menu. This will allow us to see a plus button over here. We tap that and create a new brush set. You can name it as you wish. Finally, we hold the brush we duplicated and drag it into this brush set. When we try the minimum size for the mono line brush, we can see that it is still a little too thick for this drawing. Don't worry, there is a solution. We tap the on the brush and this open the brush studio. Go to the properties menu here and decrease the minimum size to zero. This will help us to have thinner lines. You can see it is a lot better now. It feels like size 4 would be good for the furnitures in the plan. If you want to pin a point at this exact size, hit the slider button here and then the plus button over here. This will leave a mark on the slider. Now whenever you need you can easily choose it. Now we can start drawing. For scale you can simply rely on the guides. I will be drawing a bed 190mm by 200mm for example. This make 19 by 20 squares. Since I activated the drawing guide, my lines are perfectly perpendicular. I am drawing and counting. You can also use the guide to center the elements in the rooms, in between the walls as well. Here, I can center the bed perfectly. I create new layer and continue with the bedside tables. I imagine 50 by 50 would be a good size. So I draw five squares to five squares here. Tap the cursor icon over here to move it around. There would be two of them so you can simply draw it again or duplicate it. In order to duplicate, go to Layers menu, swipe left and tap Duplicate. Hit the cursor button over here and start moving the bedside table to its right position. While doing that, check here if your snapping is on. Then you can simply merge these two layers by pinching them together. 
Then we keep creating new layers and continue like this all around the house and draw each object with the desired dimensions. You can of course bring your plan into Procreate with the furniture already placed. However, in this video we wanted to show you how you can draw an entire plan setup from the beginning. Another way you can do this is by using stamped brushes of furnitures. We are continuing to build a brush library for architects using Procreate. You can check the links at the description box below or our website to see the housing brushes we prepared for Procreate. One advantage of developing your design in Procreate is that you can start with a simple sketch of your ideas and then easily turn that into a more detailed and accurate version and see if your initial ideas do work or not. It is quite similar to work with a pen and paper in that sense. You can create different options with the help of the layers as if you are working with tracing paper. You can go in between the layers and see the evolution of your ideas quite easily. Procreate can be another way of expressing your ideas into drawings. If you never tried it before, but you want to, don't be worried at all. Procreate has one of the most easy to use interfaces. You will be getting used to it in no time. On drawing, we are still continuing to place some of our furnitures. You can create your own plan. Change the design however you want in this process. This video is just to show you the methods that you would need. You do not have to follow the same design. At the end, you can group your layers according to their functions. If you reach your maximum layer number already, you can merge these groups and make space for the new ones. If you are not sure how to work with layers, create quick shapes or duplicate or move objects and such, be sure to check our first video. We tried to cover the very basics in that video and now we are building up so we can get into more details. When we zoom out, we can see we prepared the entire scene, but it is obvious this needs detailing. We can start by adding these lamps on the bedside tables, then we can continue making the bed a little less like a square, more like a bed. We can add details like covers and pillows, this all is to give a little more sense to our drawing, so that we can express the functions and purposes of these spaces without necessarily writing their names on it. What kind of details you will draw is totally up to you. You may even go on and choose or design the furnitures you want in this, these spaces. But for now, we will just add these little clues of life into our drawing to make it more expressive. The guides will still be useful while drawing these details. I am adding a wardrobe and a little desk over here. The chair will be placed just here. While drawing these kind of curves, I am creating a new layer and then duplicating this layer to mirror and position on the opposite side. This is helping me to create identical edges for the two sides of the same chair. Once I am happy with the look, I am just merging these layers together. I keep adding details like a little notebook and a laptop with a coffee on top of the desk. Let's continue throughout the entire place and make it livelier. While doing so, don't forget to keep it in balance. You can't make one room super detailed and the other with no detail at all. There needs to be harmony in between all these rooms, so it will be working as a good space altogether. Once we are finished with this process, we can go ahead and duplicate our reference layer. This layer will have the outlines of our plan, and we will duplicate one more time. This will have the solid hatch of the walls. 
Swipe left and unlock the layer, take the color from the color wheel and drop it inside the walls one by one. I am using black, but you can try gray or any other color. Be sure to check your outline layer is on top of the hatch layer. Now we will start working on shadows. For this, we start by duplicating all our furniture layers. I group them room by room, but you may have merged them into layers. Regardless, duplicate all these layers and bring all these duplicates to the top and merge them all. This will create a furniture outline layer as a whole. Tap on the tick at the right side of the layer for a few seconds to isolate this layer. Once you do that, you can see some parts of the furniture outlines are not closed spaces since there were walls there. We couldn't see these before. Let's close all open endings. This layer will help us to create the shadows for all the furniture at once. Tap the ribbon icon on top to bring the selection menu. From here choose automatic selection. We will tap on an empty area on the drawing. This will select the entire space except the enclosed furnishings. Now, we tap on the invert icon. This will invert the selection and all the furniture areas will be selected. Create a new layer and fill with black color. This will create a solid shadow layer for all the furniture. We will duplicate this layer. Tap on the thumbnail and choose alpha lock. We will fill this layer with white color. This is the furniture hatch layer. This is essential to work with the shadow layer. We reorganize the layer order, take the shadow layer to the bottom, then the hatch layer in the middle and outline layer at the very top. Tap on the visibility tick for a few seconds to open up all the layers again. Choose the furniture shadows layer and start moving. You can determine the direction of the light and the amount of the shadow. Don't forget if there's a too dramatic shadow. It may seem like all the objects are floating. Try to decide on a moderate distance. Now, it is time to connect all these shadows to objects, so we can see they are not two-dimensional and in fact touching the ground. We work on the furniture shadows layer and simply connect the edges of the shadows to the edges of the objects. Once we are done, we can take this further and create shadows for the objects on top of furnitures. We create a new layer on top of our furniture hatch layer, then start shadows for objects like TV on top of the TV stand or the cups on the table. While drawing, be careful about the light direction. The shadows all should fall down to same direction. In this process, I am also adding some shadows to the steps at the entrance and garden area so that we can understand the height differences. Once we are done with the shadows, we can see that we created a nice depth and three-dimensionality in our plan. I imagine adding floor patterns would bring the right amount of detail as a final touch. Let's duplicate the furniture outline and plan outline layers to merge them together. Once you isolate this merged layer, this is what it looks like. We need this layer because we want to fill the floor patterns in between these outlines. Go to Flooring Reference Layer and use Automatic Selection Tool to choose the floor area of each room one by one. We will be using our Architectural Pattern Brush set for this process. You can find the link in the description box below. I recommend using a different layer for the patterns, but if you don't have enough layers to work, you can continue working in the flooring reference layer. You can see the patterns are becoming a little too prominent, but don't worry, we will be dropping the opacity down so they don't break the hierarchy we set within.
When the size of the pattern is not right, you can go ahead and play with it from the brush studio. Here, you can see I need a smaller pattern. I tap on the brush and go to grain menu. There I drop down the scale. You can see how this affects the scale overall here. Finally, I am dropping down the opacity and adding my last touches to the pattern's layer. The surroundings of the building is quite different what we prepared in detail so far. I imagine this tiny house would be in nature, in between a lot of trees. I start drawing a tree and then copy it around. I erase the intersections in between. And then quite similar to what we have done before, I create a hatch and shadow layer for the trees as well. This will make trees pop out just as the rest of the drawing. Then here I am making some final touches, adding some shadows on the patio to differentiate between different heights there. With that we are done with the drawing process. We can turn of the drawing guide to see the drawing clearly. Lastly, we can try a fun little trick and color our plan. Create a new layer on top of all your previous layers. Fill this new layer with a color you like. I choose right here. Then tap the end button next to layer name and go in between different blending options. Best option seems to be lighten for now. I go on and try with different colors as well. Finally, let's add a paper texture. You can download this paper texture for free. Find the link in the description box below. We will play with the blending options again. We can also play with the opacity if necessary. And this is how the plan looks with different monochrome color options and paper texture on it. Thank you for watching. Let us know if you have any questions.